Alright students, in this video we're going to show you how to calculate the least squares regression line by hand. <clears throat> so calculating the least squared regression line by hand requires a couple of equations. y hat is equal to a plus bx is our general form of an equation of a line. The a in this case stands for the y-intercept, and we know that because the a is all by itself. It's a constant. <clears throat> the b stands for the slope because the b is multiplied times the x the coefficient of the x. So in this particular equation that you can see right here in the middle, y hat is equal to a plus bx. And that uh, y hat stands for the predicted value. So we're predicting the value based on the x, the explanatory variable. The a stands for the y-intercept and the b stands for the slope. Now that's a little bit confusing because in uh, high school we taught y equals mx plus b. So m was the slope and b was the y-intercept. So you have to be really careful what your variables represent in this particular equation. In statistics, you're going to see it lots of different ways. They use um, A and B actually interchangeably. Sometimes A is the slope, sometimes A is the y-intercept, and B vice versa. Over here on the right, you can see that y hat is equal to B naught, or B sub zero, plus B one X. And in here, in this particular example, they're using B naught to represent the y-intercept, and B sub one to represent the uh, slope. That's kind of consistent with the idea of the y-intercept being a starting value. So B naught being you start here and then the B1 being the multiplier, that slope, that rate of increase or decrease. <clears throat> so in order to find the slope and the y-intercept of our least squares regression line, we're going to start by finding the slope. We're going to scale the correlation coefficient using the standard deviation of the variables. So that just means taking the r, the correlation, and multiplying it times the standard deviation of y, just the standard deviation of the y variable alone. So if we took all the y values from each ordered pair and found the standard deviation of just those values, that would be sy. And if we took all the x's out of the ordered pairs and took the standard deviation of just the x's, that would be s of x. So we divide those two, y divided by x, just like the slope is uh, change in y over change in x, we put the y's on top. And then take that scalar and multiply it times the correlation coefficient, which is r. And that gives you the slope of the line. Once you have the slope, we use the y-intercept and the point, um, the mean of x and the mean of y to solve for the y-intercept. So we're going to plug in the mean of x for the x, the mean of y for the y, and use our slope, b, in this uh, particular example that we just calculated from the correlation and the standard deviation. So I have it written here in gray boxes. You can also see it over here on the right. On the right, it shows step one is B1. B1 in this particular instance in our roadmap stands for the slope. So you find the slope first, the R times the S of Y divided by the S of X, that's step one. Once you get that value, then you plug in your mean of X and your mean of Y and your slope, your B1, into this equation, and that will give you the Y-intercept for B0. And then you can plug both of those into your roadmap, which just describes what the variables represent in this example, an instance, and that's very important because they use other letters. So let's try an example. Find the least squared regression line for this data set. Obviously, we can't see the raw data. This is a scatter plot that is not very precisely graphed. We don't have um, any grid lines, and so it's very um, challenging to extract the raw data from this scatter plot. You can see the percent of high school grads. Um, so the percent of high school students that graduate is one dot, and then the percent of those students in poverty is the other dot. So each dot represents a high school, and it's the percent, percent that graduated and the percent that are currently in poverty. And we can see over here we have uh, some summary statistics. So we have the mean and the standard deviation of the x variable. The x variable is located on the horizontal axis, so the percent of high school students that graduated. You can see on the y-axis we have the percent in poverty, which is the y variable, and we have the mean and the standard deviation of that y variable independently. You can also see we were given the correlation r. Those five values are enough to calculate the least squares regression line. So let's remind ourselves what the formulas were. We had our roadmap where b0 is going to represent the y-intercept and b sub 1 is going to represent the slope. We're going to start with step 1 at the bottom here where the slope is equal to the r times s of y divided by s of x. So we need that equation. We're going to start with that. So here is B1. We're going to take this um, standard deviation of the y's, which is S of y, that's 3.1. <clears throat> We're going to divide it by 3.73, which is the standard deviation of the x's, and then multiply it times the correlation. The correlation is the r value, so negative 
seven five. Now that makes sense <clears throat> that the R value would give us the sine. If the R value is negative, that means our trend is going down. That means our slope should be negative. If the R value is positive, that means our slope is going up and we should have a positive slope. So that R value controls the slope's sign, which makes sense because the R value um, describes whether it's a positive or a negative trend. When we calculate this, we get about negative 0 0.62 for our slope. Negative 0 0.62. So let's interpret. Let's pause for a moment and see what that means. That means that for every 1% of the x variable, for every 1% increase in high school graduation rate, we would expect an average decrease of 0.62% living in poverty. That's our y variable. <clears throat> so for every one of the x, we would expect that much of the y to change, either increase or decrease. In this instance, for every 1% increase in high school, high school graduation rate, we would expect an average decrease of 0.62% living in poverty. So the more students that graduate from high school, the less uh, families are living in poverty. Now that we have our slope, we're going to go to the y-intercept. So that's step two. That's this purple box over here. We're going to take the mean of y and subtract the slope times the mean of x. And that's just taking our generic equation. And we're relying on the fact that our uh, line, our least squares regression line, always goes through the point x bar comma y bar. So the mean of x comma the mean of y. And that's directly in the middle. That's what the mean measures, the center. So the regression line will always go through that point. So we're just using that point to find the y-intercept now that we have the slope. All we need is the point and the slope to find the y-intercept. So in doing so, we can see that the y uh, mean was 11.35 minus this negative slope of 0 0.62 that we have got from our B1 times the mean of the x's, which is 86.01, which you can see in the given information. When we calculate that, we get a positive 64.68. That is our y-intercept. That is our B0. According to the pink roadmap, B0 stands for the y-intercept. So that is our y-intercept. So what does that look like on a graph? That means if we were to scale this appropriately so that we could see 0% high school grads, our line would trend all the way up to about 65. Almost 65% 65 of the students would be in poverty if nobody is graduating high school. Uh, that is what that interpretation sentence would sound like. So you can see in the bottom our final answer, our um, least squares regression line is y hat equals negative 0.62x plus 64.68. So that is the least squares regression line for this data. Thanks for watching. See you guys soon.